Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. I want to talk to you today about certain vegetables and fruits that are really amazing for the skin. A little bit of background, I taught college for 10 years, I taught physiology, but it was specifically physiology of the skin. Now these are college students and there's been a big huge interest in health and wellness and what's good for you and so forth and of course these students were very very interested in any type of fruit or vegetable or whatever that they could eat to improve their skin. So I'm going to go through a few of them with you, not an entire list, but some of them to give you an idea of different types of fruits and vegetables that will help to improve your skin. Now, there's only about so much you can do because the one thing you want to look at is hereditary. You know, your ancestors, uh, look at your mom, look at your dad, and then look at their parents on both sides. And looking at their skin will give you kind of an idea of what your skin is going to end up. But there are improvements that we can make and there are things that we can do. So all is not lost if you come from a gene pool that doesn't particularly have the greatest skin. So let's talk about some of them. First of all, bananas. Bananas are extremely high in all different kinds of important minerals. And people need to understand one thing about vitamins and minerals. They work synergistically together. In fact, your vitamins won't work at peak performance unless, unless there's minerals in your system and vice versa. So bananas are loaded with vitamins or minerals, particularly potassium. So if you're having any kind of leg aches, even so much as a half of a banana will take away those leg cramps. Bananas are really good for tightening the skin, so what you can do is you can eat them, but you can also mash them up and you can make a mask of it and put it all over your face. Let it semi-harden, it's not going to completely harden unless you leave it on there for 24 hours, and then wash it off. Now, back in probably the 20s, 30s, and 40s, women would mash them up and they would put them around their breasts because they wanted the breasts to get tighter and to look perkier. So that was what they did. So that's bananas. <clears throat> Let's talk about beets. Red beets are amazing. They're considered the jewel of the vegetable kingdom. And that ruby red heart of theirs, that beautiful red color, is a phytochemical. And it's an important phytochemical because when we eat red beets, it goes to our liver and it cleans out the liver. And considering that the liver has to have everything, has to filter everything in our body, the liver needs some help. It needs to be cleaned out. And that will actually um, translate into better skin if you have a liver that's cleaned out. So add, add red beets. And by the way, if some of these vegetables are things that you don't like, well then gather them up and juice them and create a juice and eat them that way. All right, <clears throat> beets also are amazing for our immune system. They really help to increase our immune system. The next one is brewer's yeast, and brewer's yeast actually is a byproduct of beer. Now what happened in the early 1900s when they were processing beer, they would get this byproduct of brewer's yeast and they'd pretty much throw it out and mix it with food that they were giving to animals. And what they noticed is the animals, their coats were just becoming amazing and gorgeous. So they started studying, scientifically studying this byproduct, this brewer's yeast. They found that it was loaded with the B vitamins. It even contained B vitamins like B19 and B52 that's difficult to find in foods. They found that it was also loaded with different uh, minerals, particularly chromium, which is really good for diabetics because diabetics are usually low in chromium. They found, too, that it's just, it's just an amazing food. It comes in a powdered form and there's different kinds. Sometimes you get the Bruges granules and sometimes it's a fine powder. I usually put it in a drink, but I have to tell you, it tastes horrible. Um, I don't like it at all. It ruins my drink. And so you can get it in pill form. Now, in terms of if you get some really fine powder, the Twin Labs brand is one that I've gotten before and I use it as a mask. So I'll mix it with a little bit of water <clears throat> and then I'll put it all over my face and neck. Now, usually you don't want to do this if you're going out someplace, you know, an hour after because, because of the high concentration of B vitamins, it can give you a niacin flush. So when you're rinsing it all off, you'll notice maybe there's a pinkening on your skin. 
it will completely go away by the next day. So usually when I do a Bruges mask, I'll do it the night before. And then in the morning, all that pinkness and everything is gone. But it's incredible. It will also give you amazing energy. B vitamins give you energy. And it will you'll notice a huge difference. If you decide to add it to a drink that you're taking, one tablespoon is good. Now, one thing I did notice is my students who were vegans, they really liked brewer's yeast. We must have different taste buds. I didn't like it. <clears throat> okay, another vegetable is broccoli. Now, if you don't like some of these, figure out different ways to fix them. You can bake broccoli. It tastes much better and much different. But broccoli is full of vitamin A and vitamin C. Both of those vitamins are particularly good for the skin. Now, vitamin A helps with rough skin. Now, like carrots, you're getting the plant form of vitamin A. So when you take it in, your body has to convert it to the fat-soluble form. Okay, it's usually a three to one ratio. So three parts to three parts of broccoli or carrots to one part of, of uh, the fat soluble. But broccoli has also an estrogen-like compound called indoles that is also very, very good and very healthy for you and for your skin. Cabbage is another one. Cabbage really helps with your digestion. Anything that helps with digestion and the flow of bile, so that you're getting rid of excess toxins and everything out of your body, is always really good. Cabbage is also filled with A and C. Now, if you marinate cabbage, you're going to have sauerkraut. And actually, it's even easier on your system. And it does help your skin because of the vitamin A and the vitamin C. Carrots are good, and you can actually, I already talked, uh, mentioned that they have a lot of vitamin A. And remember a few uh, times ago when I was talking about vitamin A, the highest concentration in your body of vitamin A is in the retina of the eye. That's what we call uh, vitamin A, a retinol vitamin. All right, so it's extremely important for your eyes. But again, it's also important for your skin. So what you can do is you can take carrots and cook them and mash them, and again, you can make a mask. So there's a lot of different things that I've told you. You can use bananas, you can use carrots, you can use brewer's yeast. All of those are inexpensive masks that actually feed the skin. Cucumbers. The skin of cucumbers, a lot of people, they peel off that skin. That's the part that you want. The cucumber skin contains silica and silica helps with the elasticity of your skin. So you definitely want to get that silica that is found in the cucumber. Um, radishes also contain silica, so you want that. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention to you is a lot of these vegetables are high in sulfur, definitely cabbage is, and parsnips. Okay, sulfur is a mineral and is the dominant element of your skin. In other words, your skin loves sulfur. So it loves things like cabbage and onions and garlic and parsnips, anything that has high content of sulfur, your skin is going to gobble up. So think if you don't like those and think of different ways that you can consume them because they will help with your skin. Parsnip is actually considered the beauty vegetable because of its perfect combination of minerals and vitamins. It has both vitamin A and vitamin C, but it also contains these particular minerals, potassium, phosphorus, sulfur, silicone, chlor uh, chlorine, and vitamin C. Parsnips are amazing for kids who are suffering from acne because it actually goes in and it helps to balance things. Acne is a tough um, issue because hormones are raging, oil glands are overproducing, overactive. And so if you're feeding your body, and most dermatologists say, oh, chocolate and sodas, they don't make any difference on your skin. They most certainly do. Anything that is high in sugar is going to cause a problem with your skin. It's also going to cause problems with your bowel movements. So you're not going to be able to get rid of all the excess to toxins. So think about parsnips. Parsnips are a winter vegetable. So you can get them, you can put them in soups, you can um, juice them however you want to eat them. Remember, it's a beauty vegetable. 
Grapes are also great. They help with the repair and the growth of connective tissue. Now, a lot of times when people have acneic skin, especially if it leaves scarring, you know, you want to rebuild that tissue behind the scar so it will help to heal the scar. So if you're eating grapes, and garlic also is another one that helps to rebuild tissue. Uh, cantaloupe helps with melan uh, melanoma. Waterman watermelon is high in iodine, but it's also high in zinc, and zinc is an important mineral. Right before a girl or a woman has her period, her zinc le levels drop. So if she's going to get breakouts, it will show up around the jawline and on the chin. All right, so she needs more zinc. So you want to look at foods that are high in zinc. Lentils are high in zinc. Watermelon is high in zinc. If you take a multi-mineral where the zinc is balanced, that is fine. But don't be taking zinc lozenges. They can be very dangerous because you want to make sure that things are balanced. The last one is oranges. And oranges are fabulous because they contain vitamin C, which helps to strengthen the collagen in your skin. You can also get vitamin A and vitamin C. You can get them as, you know, <clears throat> in a liquid form. There's a lot of different skincare companies that offer it. If you're going to put vitamin A on your skin, make sure that it's the, um, it's not the acid form of vitamin A, that it's the um, ester form of vitamin A. And the same thing with vitamin C. If you're using the, the, either of those a lot on your skin, it can actually wear the skin out. So if you're using the ester form, that's a much better and much safer form for your skin. I hope this has been helpful. Those are just some of them. I have a lot of others that I could talk to you and tell you about as well. But that will give you something to start with. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.